The omitted stand part of the question, and I call the member for Jagger Jagger. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. I'm, I'm pleased to be contributing to this debate today because there is no doubt that regional media has been hit by a triple whammy, digital disruption, uh, disruption COVID-19, and of course, this government that's done absolutely nothing about it. And it's not just regional media that's in crisis, it's Australia's media sector more broadly that's in crisis, and in fact was in crisis before COVID-19. This government's many failures have left regional media unexpectedly exposed to both the pandemic and the recession and the effects of both. And the result of that is that many communities are now without a local newspaper, radio or television news service. And this is at a time when it is more important than ever that our communities have access to reliable, local, trustworthy information. So while there's nothing in this bill that's objectionable, it's what's not in this bill that's problematic. There's no plan. There's no plan for how this government is going to support regional media through this time of crisis. There's no idea more broadly about how this government sees its role in terms of our media sector, in terms of the provision of information in our community. And this is a really serious issue for our democracy, and it's not an issue that this bill seems to take seriously enough. So while Labor won't stand in the way of these relatively minor amendments to alleviate the regulatory burden on regional broadcasters, I absolutely support the amendments moved by the member for Greenway that this bill doesn't go nearly far, far enough to support regional media. Deputy Speaker, unlike many of the, the speakers on this bill, I'm actually not from a regional area, but I'm speaking on this because this is an issue that goes beyond just those who are living in regional areas and affects us all. And in fact, we often hear from members on the other side about how regional Australia is the lifeblood of this country. Well, then why are you abandoning the media sector? Why are you giving away their television, their radio, their newspapers? Why aren't you supporting them more? There's no doubt that regional Australia is hurting and regional Australians are missing out as a result of this government's failures. This decline has happened under this government's watch. Newspapers, radio, television, all closing. And again, no serious plan to address the decline. We know from the ACCC that between 2008 and 2018, 106 local and regional newspaper titles closed across Australia, a net 15% decrease in the number of these publications. That left 21 local government areas, which were previously covered by regional media, without coverage from a single local newspaper. And that was prior to the pandemic, which of course has exacerbated all these problems. So now, according to the Public Interest Journalism Initiative, 200 titles have closed since January 2019. And I want to be clear that these closures aren't just numbers. They're missing stories about how our local communities operate. They're a gap in accountability for our local councils. They're a lack of space for a community to raise early warning signs about trouble at the local hospital. Deputy Speaker, I've worked as a regional journalist. It's where I started my career. And I know how important these services are to making communities strong. At their very best, they contribute to creating a sense of community. They support local businesses, sporting clubs, business endeavours, community groups. They are really the lifeblood of these communities and they're closing under this government's watch. They're the place where a lot of journalists get their training. And I know when I was working in regional areas, I was lucky enough to be supported by a wonderful team, by editors, sub-editors, all the people who helped me become really good at my job. Now, without that infrastructure in place, without the support for the sector more broadly, where's our next generation of journalists going to come from? Where is the strong media that we're going to need in this country over the coming years, over the coming decades? Where's the support for that? We're just not seeing it from this government. And we know that when traditional media is not there, when we don't have independent sources of news, of information, people turn to sources of disinformation and misinformation. And that's dangerous, particularly at a time like now where we're in the middle of a pandemic. And I do know that some of the members opposite don't seem to have a problem with 
sharing misinformation or disinformation, but it is a problem. We do need trustworthy, reliable information, and we need that in our regions as well as in our capital cities. Of course, Deputy Speaker, previously Australians in regional areas could have relied on the ABC for their local news services, but not under this government. Since 2014, around 800 ABC staff have lost their jobs. The number of hours of ABC factual programming has dropped by 60%, drama by 20%, and documentary by 13.5%. We know again from the ACCC digital platforms inquiry that ABC funding um, is not currently resourced to fully compensate for the decline in local reporting previously produced by traditional commercial publishers. And of course, that inquiry recommended stable and adequate funding be provided to the ABC and to SBS. And yet, what is this government doing? The latest round of budget cuts, $83.7 million, forcing another round of redundancies at the ABC. So what we've seen since 2014, when this government first started cutting the ABC's budget, is cut after cut after cut. And that's journalists gone, that's regional newsrooms closed down. And we know, and we've seen just this summer, that some of the services the ABC provides in regional areas are literally life-saving. They're the people on the ground who understand these communities in time of crisis, such as bushfires. And I know I, like many people around our country, was glued to the ABC's coverage last summer because I knew that they understood what was happening in their communities that the information they were providing about what was happening in this deadly time was accurate. Well, under this government, it's becoming harder and harder for the ABC to supply these services. And we know these cuts are ideologically driven. This government has decided that it doesn't like the ABC, it doesn't think it agrees with it, and so it's doing everything it can to undermine it. Well, I think you've misread the mood of the Australian people. People love the ABC. It is still the number one issue that people raise with me. Uh, earlier this year, before we all had to socially distance, I held a, a rally in my community to save the ABC. Hundreds of people turned up because this is an issue that people care about. They are passionate about saving the ABC and they are passionate about saving the ABC from this government. And I will certainly do all I can to make sure that the ABC is funded properly, that it is allowed to operate independently, because as a society, we need this new service. We need independent, accurate news, and our regions need this service as well. So, of course, we know the government has a pile of reviews and recommendations about regional media at its, doors, at its disposal to, to choose from, but it really hasn't come up with a plan for our media sector. And we've got a piecemeal bits and pieces uh, of change ahead of us here, but nothing substantial, nothing that's going to make the changes that we need to see for a strong and healthy regional media, and indeed a healthy media sector across our country more broadly. Uh, another area that this government's left out in terms of our media sector is community television. And again, this is something people in my community feel quite passionately about. Uh, Channel 31 here in Melbourne is respected and loved by a lot of people and is in fact where a lot of media people uh, got their start and their training a really important service to our community. Again, particularly at this time, when we see a decline in the media more broadly, when we see local newsrooms closing, why would we not support a community television service? But in fact, that's what's been happening under this government. Uh, they have tried to take away this important community local service to us at a time when social cohesion, national culture, and, and our identity needed to be fostered this government was trying to take away the, the signal for community television and instead put them online. Well, I heard very clearly from people involved both in community TV, but also from people who watch this service, particularly older people who are used to watching it uh, not online, how, how, what a change that would mean and how that would mean that really their service uh, was no longer what they were looking for or relying on. And, that really is just a, a broader indication of how this government views media and how it views it as a service to our community, not as something that needs to be supported, not as something that it needs to think through, well, yes, this is a time of disruption. Things are changing and, 
and the traditional model is uh, is being disrupted and uh, doesn't provide the revenue that it once did. Where's the thinking from this government about how it steps in to think about how it supports a broader media sector in our regions and in communities like mine? So it's time for the government to put its money where its mouth is. We don't need piecemeal uh, changes like this. We need a broader plan for how this government plans to support storytelling in communities across our country. Without it, we're at risk of being exposed to misinformation, to disinformation. We're at risk of people pushing agendas. We're at risk of people in times of crisis, people in a pandemic, people in a bushfire, missing out on information that could literally save their lives. Is that something this government wants to be responsible for? There, are more, there is more that this government could be doing to support our media sector. There is more it could be doing to support our ABC. And in fact, it is vitally important that this government fund the ABC adequately, that it makes sure that the ABC can employ the journalists it needs in regional centres, in our cities, across our country, so that we get accurate, timely information. It's time for government to think much more broadly about how it supports this sector, about what the overall plan is, rather than piecemeal reform, as I said. If the government really cared about regional and rural media, it would include a broader sector in, in part of its uh, regional grants that it's been putting out there, but that hasn't happened either. So it's time for the government to come up with that broader plan with the, the broader suggestion about what the support is. Because otherwise I fear there won't be a next generation of regional journalists. There won't be a next generation of people like me who learned how to do our jobs in regional areas, who got to tell and support communities, who were part of what the infrastructure that kept local businesses going, that told the stories of local sporting clubs, went to the local council meetings each week, uh, all those things that actually help keep our communities ticking over. If we don't do something now, those services will not be there in the future. We will be uh, perhaps, you know, running off a local Facebook page, perhaps if those communities are lucky. They certainly won't have a regional television service, and many of them unfortunately already don't because of the failures of this government. They won't have a regional radio service, and again, too many of those have closed. And they won't have a a regional newspaper. Newspapers that have existed in our countries for you know, decades now are closing under the watch of this government. I'm amazed that people in the government, particularly those who say they stand up for regional and rural Australians, think that that's acceptable. I'm amazed that they think that they're doing enough and that this bill does enough. It doesn't. We need a much more comprehensive plan. Our media is in danger. It's time for this government to step up.